Rust has a lot of mechanics and features that can improve your game, and one of these is electricity. In this guide, I'll show you 10 of the most essential electrical circuits in Rust, from the automatic turrets and anti-door camper system, to more complex auto smelter and auto lightning systems. If you find this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button below and subscribe to the channel, it helps me a lot. With that said, let's begin with the simplest anti-door camper system, which doesn't require a battery or a solar panel. All you need for this system is a siren light, a button and an HBHF sensor. Let me explain how it works. If someone is near the sensor, the siren will light up after you press the button, because the button itself generates one electricity, which is enough to light the siren. If there is no one in front of the sensor, the siren will not light up. It looks very simple, but how do you apply it to your base? For example, let's make this system in the most common 2x1 footprint. First, attach a button and a siren light near the exit inside your base. Next, take an HBHF sensor in your hands and place it in the corner of the airlock, as deep as possible. Run a wire from the button output to the sensor input and from the sensor output to the siren input. And that's it. Now, if someone is in this area in front of your base, you will know about it immediately if you click on the button inside your base. Another essential system that doesn't require electricity is an automatic furnace igniter. As you know, after the last update, you can perfectly place 9 furnaces in one square by holding down the shift button. However, it can be a pain in the ass to light each of them one by one. To fix this, just build the ceiling over these furnaces and attach an igniter in the middle of the ceiling. Next, place a button somewhere in this room and connect it to the igniter. As soon as you press the button, it will generate one electricity, which will be enough to light the furnaces from below. However, a little later, I will show you how to fully automate them, so be sure to watch this video till the end. Now it's time to move on to more complex systems, and the first of these is automatic turrets that will protect your base 24-7. If you've already been caught by these turrets, you won't have a chance to survive. For example, let's add this system to the 2x2 footprint. First, build an airlock with two doorways. On the left side, build another triangle. From this triangle, build three squares and another triangle at the end, and cover it with the walls and a double door. Attach the door controller to this double door, make sure that it opens inward and place a turret here. Repeat the same on the other side. Cover this triangle with walls and place an HBHF sensor in this corner as deep as possible. Next, place a solar panel on your roof, a battery inside your base and attach a branch, timer and splitter to the wall. Run a wire from the battery to the branch input. From the left branch out, run a wire to the sensor input and from the sensor output to the right timer input. Next, from the right branch power out connector, run a wire to the timer input and connect the timer output to the splitter. Change the time on the timer to 20 seconds, this will be enough to destroy any player. And from the splitter, run wires to the door controllers. Then using the pass-through connector, connect the turrets on both sides. And that's it, your system is ready to use. The next very useful scheme is the auto door closing system, which you should use on your front door. To do this, place a small battery and a branch next to it, somewhere inside your base. Next, clip a door controller to the front door and attach a blocker and another branch to the wall. Run a wire from the battery to the first branch and change the branch power to 3 units. From the left branch connector, run a wire to the door controller and close the door. Next, use the pass-through connector from the door controller to connect the blocker. From the blocker power out, run a wire to the branch input, and from the branch power out, run a wire to the left blocker connector. And finally, from the left branch connector, run a wire to the door controller's close connector, and change the power on this branch to one unit. And that's it, your system is ready to use. Now, every time you open the front door, it will instantly close, so you can forget about door campers. Another very useful system is an automatic light that turns on as soon as night falls and turns off when the sun comes out. To make this system, place two solar panels and connect them to a combiner. Attach a branch and a blocker to the wall. Run a wire from the combiner to the branch input. From the up left branch connector, run a wire to the left blocker connector. And from the right branch connector, run a wire to the battery. Next, from the battery output, run a wire to the blocker input and change the branch power to one unit. Now you can plug in all the lights, heaters and everything else in your base using blocker power out connector. As soon as night falls, the lights will turn on automatically, so you don't have to do anything. 
As you remembered, at the beginning of the video, I showed you how to fit 9 furnaces into one square. Now let me show you how to fully automate them. To do this, you need a battery, 2 boxes, 9 furnaces and an igniter on the ceiling. First, attach the storage adapter to all furnaces and 2 boxes. Next, clip 2 conveyors to the wall near these boxes and place a branch and a timer near the battery. Connect the battery to the branch. From the top left branch connector, run a wire to the conveyor input. Then, using the pass-through connector, run a wire to the timer input and set the timer to 5 seconds. Run a wire from the timer output to the igniter. Next, connect the filter pass from the conveyor to the timer toggle on. And finally, from the top right branch connector, run a wire to the right conveyor and turn it on. The next step is to connect all the pipes. Run the pipe from the first box to the conveyor and from the conveyor to the first furnace. Then connect all the furnaces as I show. From the last furnace, run the pipe to the second conveyor and from it to the second box. And that's it! All that's left to do is turn on the first conveyor and change the item filter. First, add a wood to the item list and change the maximum value to 10 units. Next, find ore. For example, I will use metal and also change the maximum value to 10 units. And change the filter mode from any item to require all at the bottom. This will prevent wasting additional resources so that the furnaces don't work for nothing. If I just put wood in this box, the furnaces won't start because they need both items, wood and ore. However, as soon as I add ore, the magic starts. So now, all you have to do is drop wood and ore into the left box and pick up cooked resources from the right box. And if you need to melt sulfur, just change the filter from metal to sulfur or HQM on the first conveyor. And that's it! But what should you do if you don't want to waste wood? The answer is simple. Use electric furnaces. You can actually fit 16 electric furnaces in one square and power them from one medium battery and still have more than enough room left in the middle to reach each of those furnaces. So here's the quick math. The medium battery maxes out at 50 electricity. One furnace requires 3 electricity, so 16 furnaces require 48. And we still have 2 electricity left to connect the conveyors and fully automate these furnaces. This way we are perfectly within 50 electricity. Now let me show you the whole system. Connect the battery to the branch and change the branch power to 2 units. We will use this a little later for automation. From the top right branch connector, run a wire to the first splitter and add 14 more splitters below it as shown. You only need to use 2 connectors on each splitter. That way you have perfectly enough electricity for all the furnaces. As you can see, each bottom connector provides 3 units of electricity. And from these lower splitters, you need to run wires to all the furnaces. It may look complicated, but it's actually very simple. To automate these furnaces, place one box on the left and one box on the right and attach storage adapters to these boxes and furnaces. Attach two conveyors next to these boxes and run pipes from the first box to the conveyor, from the conveyor to the furnaces, from the last furnace to the second conveyor and from it to the second box. Now, from the left branch connector, run a wire to the first conveyor and using the pass-through connector, run a wire to the second conveyor and turn them on. Finally, change the item filter on the first conveyor by adding metal, sulfur and HQM. Select any item at the bottom and watch the magic happen. By the way, you can combine the automatic turrets with the automatic box outside. Instead of running inside the base, you can just drop all the loot next to this box and it will automatically move inside. This will save you a lot of time. Plus, it can serve as bait for the turrets. To make this system, place a large box inside your base. Attach the industrial conveyor to the wall and place the storage adapter on the box. Connect the conveyor to electricity and turn it on. Next, go outside and place the second box near your base. Attach the hopper and storage adapter to this box and connect it to electricity. Next, run a pipe from this box to the conveyor and from the conveyor to a second box inside your base. And that's it! Your system is ready to use. Now, if you drop any loot near this box, it will instantly be transferred to your base. And instead of the last scheme, in today's guide, I'm gonna show you a 5-step method that will help you build the perfect base in Rust and take your game sense to the next level.